Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. We're looking at our next part in Atheism and Scholarship and we're looking at Daniel Dennett. Now Daniel Dennett is uh, an eminent philosopher, well respected around the world as a philosopher. Has done a lot of work on um, in artificial intelligence and the philosophical implications of that. Now he's written quite a bit extensively on critiquing Christianity and especially his big problem with uh, Descartes idea of the mind and what is called dualism. Now what I want to just say is the problem with Daniel Dennett's scholarship and, 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 and this is a fair comment and many scholars like Alistair McGrath and many many others philosophers as well have, have commented the, about uh, Daniel Dennett is he's extremely biased in his his scholarship especially in his own field of philosophy and in and artificial intelligence for example he mercilessly attacks Descartes absolutely mercilessly attacks, attacks Descartes you uh, if you listen to his lectures on um, whether there is um, a soul or, or whether whether the mind is is just the mind or whether there's a soul etc or is his discussions on free will you will find he always sets his argument up so that he, he looks good he always starts with a cartoon or something that makes Descartes ideas about dualism and the possibility of a soul or whatever um, suspect and he does that before he even begins and even in his academic writing he mercilessly will veer off and just attack uh, the Descartian understanding of what it is to be human. For those who don't know, Descartes was a famous um, French philosopher who said, "I think, therefore I am." In other words, he was a, he, he tried to find some kind of authority in 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 knowledge, and he doubted everything. He doubted everything around him, and he came to the point where he he came to the conclusion that he was thinking and the very fact that he had a thought was a proof that he existed so I think therefore I am and and this was a massive sort of influence on philosophical debate even today you, you can't do philosophy without thinking about Descartes and his meditations and any philosopher whether they're skeptic or not will tell you that his meditations are a joy to read and I'd encourage you to read the meditations of Descartes but the point is that because this has ruled the roost and had a big influence and because it kind of implies there is a possibility that the mind is separate from the brain which is a possibility of a soul from the Descartian position um, Dennett has just felt the need all the time to kick it in the, in, the, in, in the head and you find that time and time again in his lectures and in his writing he will home in on this he never picks the best scholars to deal with on this subject but uses cartoons and illustrations to just debunk this position and that is poor scholarship also in his research in his scientific research you know, it could be argued that a lot of his findings are quite subjective. That they're not as objective as he makes them out to be. Because many of the parameters for the experiments that he's done are actually experiments that he uses so, to prove his own position. And that's an issue that we could look into in more depth. But, just to leave you with the Descartes issue, it's been noted by top philosophers and theologians that he has... A fanaticism in this area of attacking Descartes' position, which in in his own way, what Daniel Dennett's doing is trying to attack the Judeo-Christian position on what it is to be human. It's not showing a balanced kind of scholarship where he's willing to look at the Descartes position with other scholars who are saying something in defence of that and having a dialogue and reason with them. He's not doing that. He's just using these crass kind of arguments and illustrations to knock something and debunk something. Thank you.